Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. <clears throat> Alright, Mr. Peter. We got uh, four amplifiers that you sent this way. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tackle the, the three two pills first, which are right here. These pretty much are your basic uh, two uh, Motorola 455 transistor amps from uh, many years back. Got a Hooker 100, a uh, Bilinear. That's all that's on the front of it, which I've had one of them before, and a, a Staccom Bilinear. I've had one of them too. I've had a Hooker too. <laughs> so, anyway, the first main issue you had with all three is all three of the preamps wasn't working. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, address that first before we do a final output. Okay, we're gonna do the uh, the ba the worst news first. <laughs> this is the uh, the bilinear right here. Okay, pretty unique amplifier. As you see, it's got coils here for I believe it's 80 meters all the way up to 10. Some sort of output filtering there. The uh, amplifier goes through that after being amplified on out the amp. But basically, this is the only amp I personally have seen like this to this point. It's utilized with using four 6-volt relays. If I'm correct, I mean, it says 6 DC on it. They must be running them in series or something. But you have four single-pole, single-throw relays. This could have been substituted with just using two relays. A uh, uh, double pole, double throw, and then a, another double pole, double throw for the preamp. Now here's the problem: your preamp does work. I, I could tell that it was sticking. I thought it might have been the switch right here, because I did see that the switch was uh, the middle connector was moving. So I replaced the switch, and I, I, I quickly figured out that that wasn't it. I also replaced, uh, had another metal 222, uh, 2N2222 laying around. I replaced it with that. That's the last metal I actually I had laying around. I thought I'd just do that, try to keep it original. And it wasn't that. And then I quickly figured out what it is, is the relays that are handling the preamp, they are sticking. So you pretty much have two, two choices up to this point. And uh, the first one is to pretty much start replacing relays. Uh, about the best way for me to even be able to tell which one of these, which two of these relays are being used for the preamp is I have to take this whole board out and draw a schematic of the amp. And to just literally replace the two relays that's doing the preamp and hope that's it. If you can even find these relays or you'll have to retrofit some other single pole, single throw relay with it. Or to take all four relays out, replace it with a double pole, double throw relay for the main amplifier section, and then another relay for the preamp section, which you'll see I've done. Ha I've had to do half of that with another one already, and uh, you're, you're looking at some labor there. And I mean, th to be honest with you, I mean, if the amp has sentimental value, it's all up to you. But uh, that that that's that's. It, it'd be worth more, you know, it's good, probably a good amount of labor more than what the amp's worth. So, um, I'll just leave that up to you. But like I said, the preamp works as long as you turn it on and off and it, until it comes on and leave it on, it, you know, it, it'll work. I'll demonstrate that now. Okay. Turn it on. It didn't come on. On again. There we go. It's on. Oh, you see, you're getting a little quiet spot there because that relay is sticking. Back on, off, on, off. See, so it'll come on like that sometimes, on and off, just fine. And when it comes on, it's 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 doing real well for a preamp, believe it or not. But that's the problem, man. That the the uh, 
the uh, two relays that's being used for the preamp is sticking. Okay. So before I ship that back to me, uh, to you, you can let me know what you want to do with that. But like I said, it will be some labor, uh, whichever way you want to go with that. But I, I'd be quite honest with you. If it was mine, I just wouldn't worry about it. Um, or unless it's your only amp. I know it, different people's situations are different. It, it is not uncommon for a lot of these older amps like this for the preamps to not work in them. It's kind of hard to find them this old where they do. <laughs> So, uh, I'll just, uh, leave that all up to you there. But, uh, the other, uh, the other complaint was the wattage. We'll get back to that. Once we come back to it, we're just going to address all the relays, uh, all the preamps right now in the, in the amplifiers. All righty. Next we have the hooker 100. This was actually the very first amp I ever bought. Uh, the first, uh, what I'd call proprietary amp, proprietary amp, however you say that name word. First one I ever got was an actual uh, four MOSFET 520 homebrew. But anyway, all right, the issue with this amp was I had to take the board out. Okay, I'll explain more about that when we come to the actual output of it. But with the preamp itself, the the preamp relay was shot uh the the legs were not connecting to it that's why it was you know it was, it was getting completely silent when you try to switch the preamp on the uh two the two legs connecting on the antenna end were, were just not operational anymore so what i had to do is pretty much i had to draw a schematic of the amplifier there's no two ways around that i had i had to see exactly how all this hooked up We've got the schematics over there. I was going to show them, but I forgot to bring them over here. But anyway, I drew a schematic of the whole uh, relay circuitry of the amplifier and just went ahead and added you a preamp in there with it. Okay, just like one I'd put in my regular boxes. And uh, that bad boy's working now. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you. Working well, too. There ain't nobody on the band right now, but we'll uh, increase some static. Let's see if I can find somebody real quick. There we go. Total? Yeah. Well, at least a couple thousand. Wow. Turn it on now. Oh. Turn it on now. Oh. On. Oh. On. Oh. oh. So it's bad boys are working good, man. Alrighty, so uh, that preamp is working. Let's go to the next one. Alrighty, here's the Statcom. I had to, uh, I had to replace uh, the uh, the metal two 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 n two 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 with a more modern day two 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 two. Which is uh, right over there, if you can see it. So, uh, so here is the preamp operational, which is the BIL. That's your preamp. I used to like to call them there bilaterals, bilinears, whatever. And uh, then people have quit talking on this channel, but anyway, you'll be able to see it increase. And you press it down to turn it on. By the way. All right. Off, on, off, on, off. Let's see if I can find anybody else on that band. There's a. It's pulling them in pretty good. They're really low on that channel, though. But, uh, this bad boy's working. You'll notice on a lot of these older preamps, they're not the absolute best preamps in the world, which a lot of these preamps aren't anyway. <laughs> the best time to use them is when it's as quiet as possible because they will amplify the static with them. All right, so uh, that's all three preamps. Uh, I got two of them working. The other one actually already works. You just got the relay issue that I explained to you. So uh, we'll start off with this one right here for power.
And uh, anything else that was uh, needed to be done that I did, we'll be back. Alrighty, brother. Alright. This is the Statcom by Linear. I believe. Or it may not be, actually. Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, it is. That one's blue. That's got the blue. Okay, this one right here has got the blue top. The one with the relay issue on the preamp. All right. So you said a customer would like to get it working properly. The preamp, which is a uh, check. Customer would like to know if a power supply could be added. Okay. Well, <laughs> of course a power supply couldn't be added to this case. Uh, that's for sure. How small it is. But, um... Pretty much anything can be done that you want. I would say the best thing to do with this right here is to just get one of those 30 amp switchers and just run it with it. You know, you can buy 30 amp switchers for 20 to $40 off eBay and you can just hook that bad boy up, run it with it. Or if you want to get real, uh, real crafty, you can even get one of those 30 amp switchers. Uh, take this bad boy right here and put it in the case and put these switches right here on the outside of the case Put you a fan in there and all that good stuff, but to be honest with you if he's gonna do all that You might as well do a new build But hey, it's all preference whatever you want to do So uh, that I mean that can be done if, if you would like so just uh, get back with me on that if you'd like. You put your fan in there blowing across the heat sink. Get these switches, put them on the outside. <clears throat> and then have you a switch for the power supply. Or have a switch to turn the power supply and lamp on at the same time. Whatever's clever. So anyway, I got in here and cleaned, cleaned up the box pretty well. Okay. Added these feedback circuits in there. Um... The output capacitor was uh, showing a little low. I could, the, well, the, the capacitor right here that's to collector to collector on the uh, transformer here. Pretty neat how, neat how they do that, don't they? <laughs> but anyway, um, it was two capacitors, uh, silver dip micas. One of them had had devalued almost 200 picofarad. So what I went ahead, what I went ahead and did is just combine both of them into one DM19 cap. Okay. That's what I went ahead and did with that. Uh, another thing I went ahead and did was replace the power wire and the ground wire. They were a little iffy. I threw this bead on here. I'm going to throw a tie strap on there and make sure that's not moving around. Another thing I went ahead and did, see a lot of these boxes are set up for negative, uh, 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 positive negative voltage in a, in a mobile. I probably ain't saying that right. But as was a long time ago, that some of the vehicles ran like that where the... Uh, positive was fed through the actual body of it and uh they had you know they, so they had this all set up where the heat sinks isolated and all that good stuff whenever these come across now since them days are over with i'll go ahead and take all that off and just convert it to a ground regular ground system so i went ahead and done that with this one and as you can see both so239s are grounded to ground uh that brought down a little bit of input swr that was in this box as well. So I went ahead and grounded both of your input SO239s. And uh, like I said, I cleaned up the box a bit. And the only other thing I'd like to tell you about this. Uh... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Another thing that I had to do. Okay, another thing that I had to do with this. I had to retune the output of it. There was a little bit of reflect in the output. So what I went ahead and did is retuned it. And that's what those two caps are right there in the back. I almost forgot about that. Okay. Another thing, this box works the best. If you're running a low dead key, it works the best for you just to go ahead and turn it on SSB and just leave it on. The reason why these run these are built a little different than the way we build now using SSB delay. This right here is the SSB delay. Look how small that cap is hooked on the base of the transistor so uh with that being said they don't have a much they don't have enough electrolytic to keep it keyed real well 
when it's on AM, so a low dead key. So they, they were pretty much used to this being possibly around FM with a 4-watt dead key, this and that, this and that. So if you're running a low dead key on AM, it's, it's, it's actually best for you just to leave this SSB switch on. Just leave it on all the time. Because you can hear when you're running a low dead key, you can hear them relays trying to want to chatter a little bit. So uh, me personally, I leave all my stuff on sideband anyway, so I don't have to switch it. So all you do is just get a little tiny delay, and you don't really even get that with this box on the end. All right, we're just going to run the 4-watt radio on this. We're getting on 14.8 volts. <clears throat> All right, we're on the 1,000 watt slug. This is RMS first. Oh, yeah. Right there, about 80 watts RMS. Really good uh, output for this. This doesn't have a high and low on it. It just has your uh, 220 uh, input pad, which they all got that exact input pad. Makes you wonder. Three different amps. Looks like from three different companies, but they're all designed pretty much the same. Oh, yeah. so right there about 80, 90 RMS. Here's your peak. Oh, yeah. almost 200 watts. Almost 200 watts. About 190, 195. So I'd say that's uh, working pretty good for uh, this particular amplifier because these type amps, pretty much, if you, you could, if you could get 100 watts out of them, back with the type of radios that were out when these were made, you were doing something good.